apart from my, pre my, my present feeling or reluctance to speak, born out of what has happened here today, I had also wondered whether I, sh I would have been expected to speak anyway at this event, and even then, whether I should. And that was before what happened happened. Because frankly, when someone and his co-conspirators <laughs> decide to honor you by establishing a whole creative writing center on a university college campus in your name, what else can you say? Beyond thank you very much. Honorable Kujoyansia and Dr. Koya Eni. Because if you, what can I say? Because you see, if I begin, or if someone did that for you, and you began to wonder, however gingerly, what on earth you had done to deserve this rare and enormous accolade, then it's as if you, you are... Um, one, you know, you, you are actually doubting the good sense of your benefactors. Huh? I mean, what have you done to deserve it? If they didn't think you had done something to deserve it, they wouldn't have done it. So you better not go question yourself or them. Besides, ladies and gentlemen, I suspect that Kodonyanka always knows what he is doing. Mind you, he and his team also made sure that they concretized their dream of the center while I'm still on this side. And as my dear mother would say, I still have my tongue moving in my head. What I'm not so sure is whether they were completely aware of the risk that they've taken, you know, by naming me after a creative writing center, well, I can still talk. <laughs> can you imagine? But then, the nature and the size of this honor puts me in the same space as Professor J. H. Kwabnan Katia, hey, ma bado. Hey, na mimpe yi na mimpe abade. So although the sun is high in the sky, and we cannot do it at dawn, as tradition demands of thanking. When it is this massive, I would still like you all here present to help me thank Honorable Kojoyanka, Dr. Koyue Nim Wright, Professor Blankson, and all those who helped to bring this project to the launching pad today. As for you, Mr. Ni eh, Nia Yukwe Pass. I can only say Akwaba <laughs> and wish you and the Edu Center all the very best. But although I agree with you that everything can be improved, frankly, it takes a certain kind of rudeness <laughs> for a young man to tell me, Amate Du, that he found something to edit <laughs> about, you know, the dilemma of a ghost, of all things. <laughs> Only way, I mean, the fact that I wrote it when I was what? Uh, I was, how old was I? When I, like 20 something, doesn't even give you that permission. <laughs> And the only way I can forgive you for this rudeness <laughs> is the fact that you quickly went on 
to also say that you did that to even William Shakespeare. By the way, I always wondered if other people notice, as I do, that a Cabo and a Quaba sound almost the same, and what that could mean. But we'll leave that, you know, to another conversation, for another conversation. Thank you for your heartwarming sentiments, wonderfully and dynamically expressed. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to dedicate this occasion to my four parents. The two biological, my father, I mean, not this one sitting here. This one sitting here is, as we say in, in Ghana, you know, he's occupying the space my father occupied. So, Nana, thank you. But I'm, t I'm here talking about my biological father, Nana Menu II, otherwise known as Nana Yafama, and my mother, Elizabeth Ababasma Bosu, otherwise known as Aunt Abasma. My two non-biological, but equally loving, caring, and seriously nurturing parents were the late Mr. J.B. Aban, otherwise known as Teacher Aban, and his wonderful wife, Mrs. Doris Aban. Please put your hands together. That, that incredible woman, too, was universally known as sister. Apart from these four, there were dozens more individual, individuals encountering whom definitely made, my, made an enormous positive difference to how things worked out in my life. Some were my teachers, like Mr. Baden and others from the basic years. Miss Barbara Bowman, our English teacher, uh, otherwise known as Teacher Bo, <laughs> at first warned me that, quote, poetry doesn't feed anyone, Christina. <laughs> then a couple of years later, she gave me the most precious, silent, Olivetti typewriter. After the production of the Dilemma of a Ghost, Dilemma of a Ghost at Legon, four earlier conspirators choreographed an appointment for me as a junior research fellow at the Institute of African Studies. I refer to Colonel Chris O'Brien, the then Vice Chancellor, Thomas Hodgkin, F. W. Sutherland, and yes, 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 J. H. Kobna Nketia. <laughs> My expectations of the Amatedu Center for Creative Writing, clearly, those from at least, well, I'm not the only one saying this, from what we've heard from all those who, would be, who are and would be responsible for the center, they already have loads of ideas of what to do with it and how, as well as when and where they would want me to enter. So me, I am cool like the young people would say. Except in one respect, I hope to beg AUCC and the Edu Center for some space where once in a while, I shall have an open forum, big crowd, I hope, <laughs> to discuss some of the issues that, in my opinion, are choking the development of creative writing in Ghana. Mm. I mean, 
the, these are does I mean these are dozens and dozens and dozens of issues. This and they are no secret to. They range from the painfully realistic to to what one can honestly describe as ridiculously banal. <laughs> For instance, this, some of, here are some of these issues. I would like to explore with, with, with everybody who would be interested in, in, in among so many others, this. The lack of easy access to time and space, thank you, Kina, for creative writing, which itself is the result of a lack of support and encouragement, Lola, from both the public and the private in our country for writers. Two, I would like us to look at, and Kina, please don't laugh, the ban on the use of black pens throughout the education system here in Ghana, which is an unnecessarily monstrous damper on creative writing in all its forms. <laughs> Equals, we are putting the Ministry of Education and GES on notice to explain themselves what is happening to black pens. <laughs> We shall, look at the, uh, we shall look at the fact that you don't have to be a professor or have any grant title to be a writer. We, we shall also want to look at the fact that you don't have to go to Wesley Girls High School or any of the fancy A schools to be a writer. And you don't have to only write in English to be a writer. 